Welcome to the Pat Cave. I'm your host, Pat Clark, and today we try something new. I'm a big fan of new rock stars, screen crush, heavy spoilers, all channels that focus on Easter egg and breakdown videos. They are a lot of fun to watch, which got me thinking, are they fun to make? So I decided to take a crack at it with DC's newest animated movie, Catwoman Hunted. And of course I have to start off with a spoilers warning. <gasps> Spoiler alert! I'm warning you. The movie's opening title sequence shows Catwoman taking down a portion of a human trafficking ring. Catwoman has been rescuing these women, but now she's going for the top of the food chain. Which leads us to our first scene. We open on a masquerade party in Spain, and some of the guests are dressed as superheroes. More on that to come. Black Mask pulls up with a squad of goons dressed in all white. Shortly after, Selena Kyle pulls up in a purple convertible, matching her classic 1950s costume from the comics. Hiding in plain sight, basically. Very sneaky, sneaky cat. We see multiple superhero costumes at this party, so let's point them all out. We've got Riddler, Joker, Zatanna, Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Batman, Black Lightning, Penguin, Yellow Harley Quinn, Blonde Donna Troy, Cyborg? League of Assassins, and Deathstroke. This scene is all over the place. What's that? Another Catwoman? Okay, who wore it best, Selena or this broad? Now we've got three Easter eggs in one character here, Alan Scott Green Lantern. In the previous scene, he's holding a long metal pipe or something like that. And then when we cut to him attacking Selena, he's got a wooden bat. So bat, obviously for Batman, and wood actually used to be Green Lantern's weakness back in the day. Just for a split second, you can see that they switched over to Alan Scott's original costume for one frame. Nailed it! I feel like that's, I feel like that's my first good Easter egg that I found. I mean, not to say the rest of the Easter eggs aren't good, but they're a little more obvious than that one. Catwoman meets Julia Pennyworth, which is the daughter of Alfred Pennyworth. We're already acquainted. We've also got King Faraday, which is a DC Comics secret agent, and also a Chicago native. Go Bulls! Barbara Minerva, aka Cheetah, rocking the pink Cheetah phone case. Not really an Easter egg since it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you didn't know she was Cheetah, then maybe it's an Easter egg. As Catwoman goes to jump out the plane, the back of her parachute has a shape on it. Kinda looks like a cat. Am I right? Yeah. Cheshire's the third cat-themed person we get in this movie. It's like Catwoman can't fight anyone else but another cat person. <laughs> Ridiculous. But we can't leave Batwoman without an adversary, so throw in a bat-themed character, Nosferata. I am Nosferata. DC's Nosferata's first appearance was in Superboy, Volume 4, Number 50, in 1998. But actually, Marvel's She-Hulk, number 19 in 1990, first featured a bat-themed ally named Nosferata, the She-Bat. Anyway, George Weissman, the writer of this movie, also created Gargoyles. Are those jalapenos? Uh, yeah. The voice actress of Nosferata mentioned in an interview that she used to love that show, stating, I'm ridiculously lucky to be collaborating with people I was a fan of as a child. You can definitely see the Gargoyles' influence in this bat-themed villain. The Cat and the Bat fight 52 ninjas. That's right, 52 of course being DC's favorite number. The new 52 was a relaunch of the DC Universe, caused by the events of Flashpoint. Easter egg number 11, if you look closely, you can see the world's dumbest secret agent. Harley Quinn. <sighs> I mean, come on, like... <sighs> and our final Easter egg, as Selena Kyle rides off into the sunset, the cruise ship she's on says DC of course representing Detective Comics. I will say it was pretty tough to make this Easter egg video, mainly because I wasn't sure what counts as an Easter egg and what doesn't. With the first five minutes, I had a whole page of writing, so I was like, okay, I need to shorten these up, pick out the fun, obvious Easter eggs. So yeah, it was fun, but challenging to make this video. Now that we're done with the Easter eggs, I thought I'd tell you the pros and cons of the movie, what I liked and what I didn't like. Let's start with things I didn't like. First of all, there's too many long fight scenes in this movie. I clocked it from when Cheshire and Catwoman were fighting on the roof at the 40 minute mark, and they didn't wrap up the whole Leviathan fight until 57 minutes. So 17 minutes of fighting. And literally two minutes later, the Cat and the Bat fight 52 ninjas, which every one of these League of Assassins is like super weak. I mean, they get taken out with one hit most of them. I mean, of course, some are falling off buildings, getting slashed with swords, but 
I mean, for instance, Catwoman's cat, Isis, takes out two of the ninjas. Isis took out two of yours, so technically, it's a tie. League of Assassins? More like League of Ass. Now, they do joke about this shortly after, as Talia Agul says they don't make ninjas like they used to. And that's our introduction to Talia Agul. <laughs> what a weird way to introduce this huge character. She's behind the shadows pulling the strings, and we first see her in the back of a helicopter with this one-liner. I feel like there's a lot of things cut out of this movie, especially in between those two fight scenes, from Leviathan's fight to the ninja fight. I feel like we might have gotten some... Talia Agul scenes cut out of that. Now, what happens after that 52 ninja battle? That's right, two minutes after, they fight Solomon Grande. Almost two minutes after, they fight Solomon Grundy, which doesn't take long. Batwoman gets pwned with a single punch, and Catwoman blows off his head. 15 seconds after Solomon Grundy's defeated, Cheetah steps in for the final boss battle, saying the classic line, if you want something done, do it yourself. In the final fight against Cheetah, Catwoman knows she's outmatched, so she does her best to flee the scene. Which, I don't blame her, because this Cheetah is terrifying. Look at, look at her! Look at this thing! My gosh, she's jacked! Now this is an apex predator. You hear that, Kristen Stewart? I mean, wait, what's her name? You hear that, Kristen Wiig? <laughs> Thinking back on the movie, it seems like Catwoman steals the emerald, has a bubble bath, and then fights the rest of the movie. I would have liked to have seen Catwoman rescuing the women that we saw in the opening title sequence, but that's just what I wanted to see. Some people might like the non-stop action with no character building. Now on to what I did like about the movie. Although it didn't serve the story, I liked seeing the vast amount of villains they used. Black Mask, Cheetah, Cheshire, Nosferata, Tobias Whale, Solomon Grundy, Talia al Ghul, League of Assassins, I mean Shadows, uh, Leviathan, just a lot of fun things for fanboys to fanboy out on. Alright, so that does it for my first movie review easter egg breakdown video. Uh, I thought it was really fun and I probably will do it again in the future. Let me know if you like this kind of thing down in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know what you thought about this Catwoman flick. And make sure to click like, subscribe with the friends that you have in mind. That moment when a once great show starts going downhill. You were great in your day, Campy Crusader, but now you've... Oh, what's that expression again?